So it's one of those where I'd have this set ready to go so you can just run it in real quick if you need to set it up. You don't have to set it up later and stop everything. All right. So again, as we talked yesterday, righty tidy, right? So I'm going to walk up to this. First of all, grip head goes on the, on the stem first. It's way easier to put the grip head onto this pin than to put the grip head, sorry, with, with the scrim. Then to put the grip head on here and then try to wiggle that little stem in here. Yeah, and it's everywhere. Right? Yeah. 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 So, grip head goes on here. Everything's locked down nice and tight. I got it ready. I walk up to my stand. I want to see the handle in front of me that's going to tighten the boom. Not tighten it to the pin, not to mount it to the stand, but the part that's going to hold the angle in place. Okay? If I'm looking at it, to the right is tight. All right? Hey John, just one more quick thing. Yeah. You might want to set this up before you put the wheels on unless you have some of the 6.3 like John. That's a fair point. Uh, yeah. Also, <laughs> that's this top part. You see what I just did? I dropped this pin yeah. down. Now I don't have to set this, you know, I don't need to be up here to put the scrim in place. Drop the pin. All right, you can move this later. It's pretty lightweight. So, get it set. And talk about the pin plate that what you're adjusting right now. Have it the difference? Is there a difference in having on the on the other hole that's on the bottom compared to the top? This right here. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. So on the let's back off a second. On all your grip heads should be on all the grip heads. I'm sure there's a brand out there that doesn't, but on the good ones, you're gonna have two two positions. Okay. Look at the length of that stem on the pin, where the dropout is. You want to make sure that your tightening knob goes into the position where the dropout is, all right? If it's a short pin for some reason, like you'd have on the top of a you know, grass stud on a stand like that, every once in a while you get some weird grip. It's on Amazon, it's cheap, you know, whatever. Make sure you're gonna line up to where it needs to go in. That's gonna keep it going. If this wiggles loose for any reason, much less of a chance of it popping out of here if it's in that knockout, all right? Try to fly it as flat as possible. If it's flat, wind's going to go past it. That's a big deal. That's a, if it's up, yeah. it's going to catch wind. If it's sideways, it's going to catch wind. Yeah. Right? You're always working angle with the sun. I get it. Do the best you can. Keep it as flat as possible. <laughs> a lot of these stands are going to be about 11 foot tall. The uh, aluminum Matthew stands, about 11 foot tall. That's probably good for as much, you know, as much as you need. Every once in a while, you got to back this thing up. The first day we were shooting, and the legs we were getting so tight because of the angle of the sun, the legs were getting in the shot. A taller stand, you can back it up a little bit more, rise it up a little bit higher. You kind of get into that angle a little bit better from the height of the stand. So every once in a while, the taller stand is helpful, but the 11s are usually pretty good for this. Okay. What would you recommend if? You could you go up one more level of boom arm for length and stability, or is that the okay. most recommended for outside? All right, so when you're buying these tall stands, they're almost always going to be a combo stand, which means it'll have a junior receiver. Remember the junior pin, one and one eighth, and it'll have a pop-up baby pin, five eighths. If you go to one of these stands that has the junior receiver, that gives you the <laughs> option of what's called a junior boom. Instead of being a female receiver for the baby pin for the stand attachment will be a pin off the bottom of the boom, a one and one eighth inch pin. That drops directly into the combo. Those things are beefy. Huge boom. It's big, it's heavy, it's more expensive, but it's also much more robust with a much stronger attachment. And because of that, it has greater extension. So if you go to a junior boom, you want to get another two to three feet of extension on the boom arm. That's one way to get. Do you think that's advisable for people in more high wickies or, or all of that? You always have your bets. You know, you got you to make a judgment call on that. Just like it's a 40 mile an hour consistent gust day, the shots aren't going to be as good, but if you're going to keep people safe, lose the script. I mean, it's just one of those things. Orient yourself, get away from the light. Your point about, you know, shooting with the wind at your back, it's going to keep that thing from spinning, but this is going to be at a different orientation. Yeah. Almost always. You're never going to have this thing behind you. Yeah. If, we had this question this morning, so this is important. If you want to load to the right, okay? Let's say the wind is coming from J towards me. I want to load to the right, but I don't want this thing 
to catch wind underneath of it and constantly push this up and then it goes back. Because remember, we're going to try to load this over top of a leg, right? That's the best way to support that weight. But if the wind is going to catch that, now here's my weak spot. It's more likely to tip this way, all right? So keep in mind, when you're placing your counterweight, if the wind is coming this way constantly, I want to load that side of the stance. I want as much weight as possible so I don't get flipped coming this way. All right. Uh, the other thing we can do, if you have the extension on the arm, right? Now, adjusting this exact scenario. 